What's up, everybody? Welcome to this new episode of Class Action. I stole your line already. I already there we did. Go. <laughs> I had to do good. it. You're doing good anyway. My name is PLD, and who are you? It's me. It's me. It's RJ. <laughs> I gotta say, I stole I your like your line. I do like what's on your face. Do I you? like your face right now. I do. I'm, I felt that. like I Good need point. to copy my heroes, and that okay, I can, I can, I oh, can, I can pull That's it off. Beautiful. Maybe. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I actually, had a had a costume party last night. Uh -huh. so I figured I would, I could use the stash, but since we're doing class action today, I felt like I should keep it on, and you know. And I gotta say. Stash. You rock the stash well. It, it is a very good stash. I Thank do you. my stashes in there very well. Uh, it is kind of a little sickening, though. We we are we did not coordinate this whole sweatshirt nope. thing. We just happen to be both wearing the Action Industry sweatshirt at the same time. Well, it's fitting. We are on the Action Industries YouTube channel, home of Ben Bateman and Andrew Guy. Uh, thank you, of course, to them for giving us this little slice on the YouTubes. Um, you know, I thought about it last week. We last week opened that cold open before. Um, and mm -hmm. actually, it was pretty funny. Um, I didn't even think about trying to do it again this week. Uh, I don't know if we could. I know we could replicate that, or would it get we stale? Probably can. We probably couldn't. It's just like, we, we we could replicate what you did when we finished the show. We will. I guarantee we will. And we'll see if you can make it. <laughs> you can make it out. We gotta. We that. gotta talk. Like, I'm. I'm not sure if everyone knows what happened, <laughs> but we gotta talk about it. Should we talk about it now, or should we talk about it later on? I think we should, actually we should talk about it now because if like now, we wait till the very, very end, it's gonna all right be weird. He's throwing me into the bus. We open a class action. This has all been a law, obviously a law based, like for some reason, for a theme. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, class action. I think the title came first, and then like everything else was followed. So the like, class action is a cool title. So also we get like you know law, we get snap judgment, we get the public defender, we got all these things that were law based and everything. And I always had the the saying at the end. It was kind of our, our trademark before we go. And I'd say you know court is adjourned. I came up with that one day, and I just randomly yeah. boom, we'll close it. That was our our closing. Or I know we're, it's very very amazing stuff. I don't know how we're not big huge stars <laughs> with the uh, amazing genius talent that we have. We are. <laughs> Either way, for some reason, these past like two times, I've kind of like almost forgotten that closing line. And last week, I completely forgot it, and I went a different direction. <laughs> Instead of saying "court is adjourned," I started saying and "justice has been served." <laughs> First, you sort of you, you start to stall or something. You're like, "Okay, so this is, we're gonna justice. end it here. Justice has to... been served. <laughs> <laughs> Court's adjourned." And I just lose my shit. I was trying to figure out what the, the saying was. That's what it was. I couldn't, for the life of me, remember. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, I'm losing some brain cells. I was like, it's something about laws. Justice, that sounds good. And I was like, but as soon as I said served, that's what I remember. I was like, justice has been served. I uh, course, sure. So what am I going to say at the end of this episode? I guess we're going to find out. Now we're really building up to something, I feel. This is yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. Well, guys, welcome again to Class Action. As Jarvi would say, the classiest show on the interwebs. Well, we think... would. <laughs> but not this time. Not today. Today, we're actually bringing out the big guns. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> that was the pun you're going to use? That was yeah. the pun you're going to use? Uh, Why did you say that I had that prep? That would have been... I got to throw you under the bus on that one. He's like, <laughs> when you bring them on, I'm going to have these puns ready to go. And it's gonna be, I'm like, really? what? Uh, okay. Well, without further ado, we're, 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 shooting our, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. <laughs> we have a guest today, guys. A guest from the Action Army. Uh, he's the one only the Action Army General. We love him. You know him. He was on our episode before. We talked about John Wick versus the Matrix. He is actually our fighting expert. Uh, the one, the only... My friend Matty Gunny. <laughs> What's up, guys? That was <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. This kind of class. Have you been on a show with this kind of class? Uh, no. This, this is the as you say. This is the classiest show on the internet, oh. and I feel like I'm just bringing it down a little bit more. But I guess that's what we need for the kind of topics that we're talking about here. But bringing out the big guns. You actually got well a done, shirt on. You have a gun on your shirt, so yeah. So uh, this is a, a friend of mine, uh, Brandon Gibson, who is uh, MMA coach, and his mm. nickname is Six Gun. So uh, this is his. I don't know if he's still selling them, but Six Gun Striking. He's an amazing coach, probably the best striking coach in MMA, and yeah, 
Twitch? Gun, gunner, big guns. Well, I will action say movies. <laughs> Sounds good. I will say I'm losing my earphone here. Uh, I will say we we got in class action. What we do, we take up two uh, different options: option A, option B. Uh, could be movies, could be franchises, could be actors. It generally, it's been movies recently. We've done a lot more movies recently. Might have to go back and try something new. Sometimes Jarvis do some actors or something, but it's been a while since we've done actors, I think. But either way, we put them up against each other. It's five special made categories, custom made categories, and we have them duke it out uh, MMA style. So we find special made. Gonna, special made. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> custom made. How about that? Uh, and we find out who is going to win, who is the better, who is who comes out on top, and who's tapping out, uh, as they would say. Um, oh, you like that? There well we done, go. Sir. That was very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Uh, but we have, today. I love it. we have Matty Gunner on. Um, as a member of the Action Army, uh, there's a few people in the Action Army, a uh, few stars, how we say, that are iconic. Iconic to, to Ben and Drew and to our shows that we watch. We always talk about the Jerry B's, we always talk about the Tom Cruises. There's one more that we talk about quite a few, quite quite a few times, and that's Nick Cage. Um, and Nick Cage, if you don't know, um, he has a movie coming out somewhat soon. Uh, it's called Jujitsu. Look at Matty's face. He just is, lights up. He knows right. what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait. Since I have Matty Gunner on screen here, and we all love Nick Cage as part of the Action Army as well. Nick Cage is basically the Action Army himself. Even yes. if he doesn't know it. It's part of the terms and conditions. Like to become a general, you have to love Nick Cage. Exactly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this trailer, even though it has nothing to do with our movies we're talking about today. We haven't even talked about the movies we're gonna talk about today, but that's okay. Because we're gonna go right into the trailer for jujitsu. We're gonna watch this bad boy and see what we think. Uh coming up soon. Uh might have to do some kind of big commentary or something. We're not sure. We're talking about that. Yeah. You know. I think it's no. I think it's uh, early November. This movie comes yeah, out. Early November. Uh, I can't wait. That's yeah. only a couple of weeks away. Yeah. All right. Now, further ado, can you, can you give me one. just five seconds? I'm going to close the window. Just five seconds. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. We're ready to do this. Uh, Dude, I can't wait for this. I got Drew to watch the trailer on his Twitch channel a few <laughs> days ago, and it was epic. It was epic. It really was. All right, let's do this thing. Let's go for it. Okay. You know what? I don't understand. Oh god. Oh god. Is this another trailer? Because huh? the comment you see in the sky right now seen that one. is over the earth every six years causes a point. Some predator vibes. Dude, that is literally predator. The space man. The spaceman. Spaceman. Is alien politics five through fifteen? Alien politics five through fifteen. Now you are all the chosen. And then we'll see. Frank Grillo, love Frank Grillo. As you die bravely. No one else will have to. Tony, uh, oh, so oh, good. A lot of whipping and whooshing. He's crazy. Like me. <laughs> like me. They should have left that part out. No. <laughs> <laughs> the director said kill box of retaliation. Lit. Shouldn't have mentioned that. That's not enticing me at all. There's no honor in killing crazy. <sighs> Oh. oh, I can fly too. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. I can't wait for this. I did not see that trailer. I saw another one. Oh really? There's yeah. another one. There's I mean, another that's one. The one, I one. That's only what I, I see. I just too. have to tell you, right? From an expert analysis. There was not a single second of jujitsu in that fucking trailer. <laughs> <laughs> there was not one single solitary second of jujitsu in that fucking trailer. 
<laughs> I can't wait. Uh, Nick Cage has his own version of jujitsu. When he? you say jujitsu, it's jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's all you got to do is just say you know jujitsu. It's like I know kung fu. Yeah, yeah. me. That's Nick Cage's version. I know jujitsu, yeah. but I'm not showing it to you. That's all. <laughs> yeah, Nick Cage looks like he's doing his own stunts too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for sure, this a could be a, this could be a fucking disaster. <laughs> so yeah, crazy. there was a lot of close-ups during those sword fights at the end there. Like I was like, I'm not going to show my feet moving. We're just going to get those up close, like the old mm -hmm. Darth Vader will be one from Episode Four, where we're not moving around a whole lot, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that works. because you're so old and rigid, like you just can't do it. But <laughs> do it. dude, I hope Tony Jaa and Frank Grillo. Face off because Grillo to me in that looks like the bad guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I I hope we see Grillo and Tony Jaa get down because Tony Jaa is so underrated. <clears throat> yeah, Agreed. Definitely. definitely, I agree with that as well. Uh, I don't know, Jerry, about you, but it, it seems like this might have to be a topic in the future. Maybe uh, once it, it has out. to. We it haven't had to. many. This this was whole pandemic began. This class actually began. We we're using doing original like the new movies that came out we would put them up against our older movies and like that we haven't had any movies in a while really uh to, to work with so this might be one we might have to we should put it up against uh kickbox or retaliation, retaliation. <laughs> oh That's right. god oh god no i watched that movie <laughs> and there was like there were so many mma fighters that they pulled in for it joseph uh, pierre came the last guest from bricio verdum i was like guys is this what it's come to like <laughs> this is what your career has come to you stop taking brain like shots to the head and getting brain damage so you could do shitty movies okay hey okay more power to you man more power to you <laughs> all right well let's uh let's move on with the rest of our show now uh, we are doing last week we covered uh we wanted to originally do this as a trio we were gonna do lethal weapon 2 versus Die Hard 2 versus beverly hills cop 2 we decided that we wanted to concentrate a little bit more on the films as a whole instead of spreading them out so thin uh so we decided to make a i don't know mini tournament or whatnot we threw put the three in a hat we picked out die hard two we picked out lethal weapon two and those are the two that are going to face each other and we said the winner of that will go on to face the beverly hills cop two well lethal weapon two won last week it beat die hard uh, if i remember correctly it was pretty soundly it wasn't uh, yeah it wasn't i think it was eight close. to two or something eight two seven three something to that effect lethal weapon wow. two is a better movie than die hard two uh as a sequel it's a uh, that surprised some people that I said that. I know some people were a little upset about that, but uh, it, it that's how the categories work. That's how it's surprised. We get surprised by the categories all the time. It, uh, it makes it a mockery of our of our own uh, <laughs> thoughts. Um, but this week we are, so we're taking on the winner from last week, Lethal Weapon 2. There you go. Love that alternative poster. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an alternative poster for the other one, so we're left with the plain old Beverly Hills Cop 2 poster. Classic. You know, two classic. Yep. It's so iconic, though. It is very. It nice is, time. and the Letterman jacket and everything. It's and it is. It's two great directors. That's what it is. Unfortunately, the, talking about the directors of Die Hard too, like Rennie Harlan, who not that big of a deal. Uh, but you got Richard Donner versus Tony Scott in this one. So this is an interesting, definitely one to bring up to our attention. Um, we have our five categories we're going to do, but before that, we do have a couple of games we like it to play. Uh, the first game we always like to play is my favorite game. What would Ed Harris play? Of course. Ed Harris, my boy. He he makes every movie he's ever been in better. He, he, he even he makes a bad movie good, he makes a good movie great, he makes a great movie legendary. Uh, and so he makes TV shows so much more worth watching. Oh yeah. That's true. Westworld is the is much yep. better with him than it was without him. Um <clears throat> I will say what we do with him, we we uh, replace somebody, we recast Ed Harris in a role, or if we want to, we can write a new role if we decide to be very creative, which we sometimes are. We've gotten very creative sometimes with this and it's gonna run really well for us. Other times we get a little lazy about it, we go through the, the, the obvious choice. Um but I'm interested to see we got three people to choose. We did a lethal weapon two last week, Beverly Hills Cop two. Jarvi, who do you have at Harris in this Beverly Hills Cop two? I have Ed Harris as Harold Lutz. I just want to see him be the biggest douchebag in the movie, just yelling at Rosewood, I'm sorry, Rosewood, and sort of get shot down at the very end. We haven't seen him really play these sleazeball kind of characters. And right? I think it would be so much fun to see him like go out on it. <laughs> I kind of like that. I kind of like to see what he would do with that. He would, uh, because he I just definitely see him going, yell again. <laughs> oh, you got to yell at the guy and then get all. Oh, I like that though. All right, I can see that. Uh, Maddie, do you have one you've decided on? 
Uh, Javi just took mine. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <I think it's laughs> good, huh? Javi just took mine. Because, huh. like I said, like, I think Ed Harris has it in him to play the ultimate guy that you just want to be like, dude, shut up. <laughs> I do like that, but, too. Oh, man. But, yeah, I, I, I got to agree. You gotta agree with that. I, know, I, gotta, I gotta agree with Javi. Like, I don't think I can come up with one on this part that's much better, <laughs> other than creating one for him. That's true. That's true. I actually did also not create one for him this week. I was gonna recast. I'm gonna try. I, I thought about Harold Luds. I think I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I want to see uh, a more angry mayor. Okay, Mayor Ted Egan, mm-hmm. Robert Ridgely. Instead, so instead, when Lutz starts getting his action at the end, there, I think Ed Harris plays a very stately character, stately ma- uh, mayor role throughout the entire film until the end. And the end comes where he gets sick of Harold, Harold Lutz's shit, and he tears into him and fires him. Gets really in depth in it. I think it'd be fucking funny as shit to watch going in. So that's where I got to go with it on that. Uh, <laughs> fun times and all. That's more believable, definitely, because he. I would believe him. Being that type of character way more yeah. than than a than a you know sleazy police chief for sure. Yeah, yeah. He definitely has he, he has that within him to be a stately kind of person. And he's done that mm, yeah. in a bunch of movies. So he'd be kind of very stately, very politics and politician. So he probably played he played uh, um, John McCain in a uh, game change that actually he's a presidential candidate in uh, that movie. So that, that fits pretty well in that case. Um, but I yeah, seen that movie. It was an HBO. He played John McCain. He did. He played John McCain, wow. and uh, and uh, I can't remember now who played uh, Sarah Palin. Basically, it was a movie about Sarah Palin, to be honest, mm-hmm. with you, more than anything else. It was uh, back that yeah, he, he, uh, I think it was a Golden Globe nominated for that one, I believe. Maybe one. Wow. Sure. So uh, yeah, it was a good. It was a good role for him. Uh, I almost want to find it and show you. I almost, uh, I'm going to take show us time the movie. To, I'll, no, not the whole movie. <laughs> just, uh, it's it's actually like a class action watch along. That should be anything. Well, anything with that hair would be a weird uh, choice, though. Lot, lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Julianne Moore played a uh, played a uh, oh, wow, wow, played Sarah Palin. Let's see, uh, uh, uh let me just picture it up here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, let me share this Whoop. screen. Out, uh... <laughs> So that the on the that, on the right, I couldn't, I couldn't tell the difference. Right? Wow, it's pretty good, right? That's crazy. There's Julianne Moore as a uh, Sarah Palin. Pretty, pretty good. It's pretty. So good you've role. seen the movie as well? I have. I did. It was it was a very good. Mm. Woody Harrelson's also in it. Hmm. There's another uh, shot of him at that role. There you go. It's pretty good. Doesn't quite have the cheeks that John had, but uh, it, otherwise it's pretty pretty solid. So, all right, we'll stop. Of course, you would know about those lesser known Ed Harris movies as well. <laughs> of course, I did. I mean, the man can do anything. Ed Harris can do anything, really. One hundred ten percent there. One hundred ten percent. Um, so anyway, we're uh, we're going off track here a little bit. That's our game for this week. Thank you so much for playing along, Maddie and Richard. As usual, we will get into our second game. We always do two games a week in uh, class action. Uh, we have this one this is why we actually initially brought Maddie Gunner on. He was, gonna, he was initially going to record this segment and give it to us, but instead, because he was around, because we wanted to watch jujitsu together, we decided to go watch the whole the whole thing. He's going to come on and do the whole show live. But Richard, tell us what Public Defender is. And your best public word. defender, yes, of course, my favorite segment. Uh, first of all, why do we call it the public defender? Because, as you said, we started off as a sort of legal punny show. Uh, we figured we'd call ourselves class action, and then we figured one of the segments should be called the public defender because in movies, usually the public defenders are they are overworked, they are underpaid, they're having a very tough life um, professionally, and uh. They have many cases, and when they show up in court, they might have to come up with things on the spot, off the cuff. So this list, pretty much what Matt is going to give us, is going to be our off the cuff list. So we're going to, he's going to give us a topic, and we're going to come up with stuff on the spot without knowing it in advance. And most likely, we're going to look like idiots. uh, That's usually what happens. We usually look like idiots, and we try to start scrambling. And sometimes it gets really bad, and sometimes we have to save each other. And well, I'm hoping we could save each other today. Matty, we better. It's up to you, my friend. Okay, That's so for the, for the sake of being fair, I also didn't think about my list for this. Oh, okay, okay. 
last time I believe you guys did best action sequels. Yes. Yep. I Paul gave that one to me. Yeah. Yeah. Totally this burned. one, best action sequences. Ooh. Oh, that's tough. Does it have to be action movies or just action sequences in movies? Action sequences, and it can be okay. a fight. It can be a chase. All right. Mm, okay. All I right. can already see lots of Star Wars stuff coming up in Paul's mind. <laughs> I, <laughs> Star Wars is always a go-to for me. I'm not going to lie there. Star Wars, I'll even say it. Only if you count the actual sequence, the whole uh, space battle in Revenge of the Sith. The very beginning yes. space battle in Revenge of the Sith with the tracking mm -hmm. and everything. I was like, That's a great space battle action sequence. Um, and I'll even keep it in the same movie. The Anakin Obi-Wan lightsaber duel at the end of that is oh, very, so that's a very classic to watch. Um, very emotional duel. Yes, yes, the whole time that we're we're very big stands of Rend of the Sith on this channel. So, <laughs> uh, you got one for me, Jeremy? You got it. Uh, so you're going with the Revenge of the Sith? I'll go with that. I'm gonna, we can both do a couple if you want, but so why don't you have one? Because my I figured I would go with the Star Wars movie as well, and I wanted to talk about the the Last Jedi, um, Kylo and Ray scene when they team up and fight, uh, oh, fight the guards. That's one of my power. favorite uh, sabers. Ah. But since you went with Star Wars, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm going to go with something completely different, and I'm going to go with uh, Edge of Tomorrow Ooh. when Cruz is already like semi capable in the battles and he's showing off uh, in front of Edmund with Blunt how everything's coming. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. I do like that one. I, I really cool. enjoy these sequences. So, yeah, there's one. Okay, I better go with your next with your first one. Okay, if I'm doing my top five, I guess off the top of my head, I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's a it's a French film called District B13. I've heard uh, about it. It's a parkour movie. Yeah, it's the parkour mm -hmm. movie. There's the opening chase is incredible. It's basically uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I think it's David Bell, who's the guy who pretty much yep. brought parkour into the mm -hmm. mainstream. He's being chased through this like block of apartments, this block of flats in this rundown district in Paris. And he does things like he, there's one moment where he grabs a bar. It's like a, a, a pipe on top of the, the roof and he jumps through like the thin window mm -hmm. at the top of a door. And he just like clears through that. And the guys have, they're like looking like, how the fuck did he do that? And then it just begins <laughs> this whole parkour chase across the uh like the rooftops of paris and it, it's just so much fun oh that's a good one that's i've, good I've one. heard about this movie and i've seen i think i've seen the trailer and it looks looks pretty it looks pretty cool oh, yeah nice. they did a, a hollywood remake with paul walker uh, that's the one yeah that's what concrete I saw. something exactly. i never saw the the remake oh wow, brick, brick something yeah or yeah yeah brick something like that brick something concrete something <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, my number two that I'll go with. Uh, this is gonna, I don't know if you can call it an action sequence or not, but I'll, I'll try to give it to me. It's it's a battle. It's a it's the battle of Helm's Deep in the Two Towers. Oof. Classic. Yeah. That's so you're going with Helm's Deep, and not Helm's Deep. Return of the King. Okay. No, I'd go with Helm's Deep. Hel mm -hmm. Return of the King is a little bit more, supposedly more epic, but I always felt like it was just like the. Oh, we're gonna try to do better than two towers. Two towers are like the first one that yeah. like, was like the original in a way. You like, couldn't really pop special. it. I love mm -hmm. the beginning with like the with their like the sound mm -hmm. of stamping the things they're all saying, and then that little arrow comes and that starts the whole thing. And there's just so many sequences during the whole thing, which is just so much fun. Eric uh, Gimli throughout the entire battle. I should have picked up at a spot. <laughs> That's the only one. That's the only one. And then the uh, like. It, that was in the third, though. That was in the third one. That's true. That's only counts one in the third one. That's true. But you gotta, you gotta have to toss me. What? You're gonna have to toss me. Don't tell the elf. Not a word. All right, and he throws them. They're back to back. They're playing up left and right. And even then, when the the they actually get through, they blow up the side of the wall, and all of a sudden, like everybody's down, and all those start rushing in. And when Gimli gets up, just like mosh pit, dives over the top of them. So good. So good. Well, the biggest stage dive. <laughs> it is the world's biggest stage dive. And of course, when Gandalf comes at the end and, and saves mm. save the day, so powerful, so good. So uh, that's that's my my number two. 
All right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna piggyback off of Maddie a little bit when he mentioned parkour, and I'm gonna go with the opening chase sequence in Casino Royale when uh, James Bond Ooh. doing some parkour himself. That is a good one. That is, really I think good. it's it's the greatest James Bond action sequence we've we've seen because I agree with that. At that point, yeah. that, there, like James Bond has never been so physically able as he right. in Casino Royale, and that is the first time we see him really go through some shit. And yeah, he can, yeah, and he can throw down. He's actually chasing another parkour specialist. It's one of the OG parkour dudes. <laughs> for, yeah, I can't I mean, remember his name. I can't remember his name either. He's also a French guy. About- yeah, I, I know the one you mean. I think he's also in District B thirteen. Oh, he, he probably is. Part, I think probably. he plays the partner. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right, that's not a good one, Jarvis. Not going. What about you, Maddie? Uh, this one, I'm thinking in my head right now. It's a movie that kind of gets bashed a little bit in the action army. It's uh, when Donnie Yen fights the ten black belts in Ip Man. Oh, I haven't seen Ip Man yet. Oh, it's one of those, one of those franchises that I have to get through. It's Actually, so happen. beautifully shot. I love the the action sequences in all the Ip Man movies because they are so beautifully shot. They are like a dance between Ip mm-hmm. Man and his, and his opponents. But this one, you just see Ip Man just go ham on like 10 black belts, and it's like, oh, hell oh, yeah. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. And nice. Donnie Yen's the man, so it's hard is. not to put him in my list. Well, I get that. I get that. Um... Okay, maybe we'll just do maybe we'll do one more each. So we can yeah, top three. Each other. Uh, the one I'll end up with. I'll, I'll, I'm not doing this to kiss Drew's ass, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, mm. the, the hallway scene. Oh boy, old boy. Oh, oh wow. dude, yes. The whole thing is so gnarly, so raw, so vicious, and at the end, just that mad glint in his eye, the smile is just so brutal. It's ah, uh, God, it's no better than that. Doesn't tell me there's no action bit of that at that point. Oof. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, all right. So initially, I wanted to go with John Wick 3, the dog fight, like when the dogs are fighting with Halle Berry, but I feel like I'm going to go with something a little more emotional. And it's and it happens just before the action sequence, but it builds into the action sequence. And it's the, it's the Avengers Endgame portals moment. Oh. How it builds up to the battle and everyone's showing up on your left. He gets the hammer. He said, Avengers assemble and then they just storm into battle. <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest moments in cinematic history. I agree. It truly is. I, it's, it's a powerful one for sure. Definitely. All right, Maddie, what's your last one? I got to go with my all time favorite fight scene from any movie ever. And it's the kitchen fight. In the Raid Two, oh, mm-hmm. oh I my God. My it's so brutal, so well shot. The actual martial arts in it is incredible. Oh, I, I can watch that over and over and over. I could probably watch that a thousand times and not get and still be wowed by it. It's just oh, it's so well shot. The martial arts is, is the, like the skill level is incredible. The fact that they both did it themselves, yeah, I, I, I got to pick that one. I, I I can't argue with that one at all. Absolutely. Good choice. Good list. Good times. Good work. That, that went pretty well. That's it. It went pretty well, surprisingly. Yeah. We didn't actually look like idiots, I don't think, too much. Nope. That's impressive no. for us. Too much. Uh, we, too, much. Not <laughs> too much. Not too much. Not too much. All right. Well, then, let's move on. We've been happy to do the show. We've got 30 minutes or so. We'll try to get through, get through the rest of the actual categories. We do have one more small segment. Uh, this is a very small segment, and uh, we told Maddie we weren't going to tell him what it's about because it's just that small. Um, we call it snap judgment. What does snap judgment mean? Well, we talked about the categories. We talked about how the categories can make or break these films uh, uh, as far as who's going to win this battle. Um, but we have also found that the categories will surprise us, and uh, uh, we'll think one way about, uh, about who's going to win, and uh, we're going to find out that we're wrong. So snap judgment is we wanted to put it down on record so that like afterwards we can talk about it. we went on record which film we think is going to win. Do we think Beverly Hills Cop 2 is going to win or do we think Lethal Weapon 2 is going to win? And then we get to come back and see who was right, who was wrong, who was a, who was a genius and who's an idiot. Uh, i go from there. So without further ado, snap judgment. Jarby, Lethal Weapon 2, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Go. Lethal Weapon 2. Okay. Maddie. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Okay, mine. Lethal Weapon 2, I think. I 
think, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I, got, I, I said it. I said it, so we're going to stick with it. So, all right. That's our snap judgment. Let's find out who is right. It's probably Jarvie and I are going to be idiots, and then Maddie will be smart. Mm, I mean, that's what could definitely happen. <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> Never know, but uh, that's you great directors. Uh, we got five categories going on. There we go. The better leads in the film. We did that last week as well. We got Axel Foley this time versus Riggs and Murtaugh. We got better sidekicks, which is a new category we did this week. Uh, we decided last week Die Hard 2 didn't really have a great sidekick to work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could argue – they had a couple side characters, but overall it wasn't worth the battle. Whereas Beverly Hills Cop 2 has the Rosewood, Rosewood and John Taggart. Mm. And of course, Lethal Weapon 2 has the indomitable Leo Getz. Yes. Uh, Joe Pesci, who really uh, makes his statement on, makes his uh, mark on this film. Um, three to make better action sequences, which you can decide at the time. Uh, four, better villain. We got the two, some, the Maxwell Dent. I'm not going to try to say the actor's name. We decided we're not going to say Please that. Please do. Please do <laughs> Should I go to say the actor? I'm gonna try. Let's see. Go for it. His name, Mac Play Maxwell Dent, is Jurgen Proshnow. Jurgen Maybe. Proshnow. Does that sound right? And it's actually it might be Jurgen Proshnow. Jurgen Proshnow. Could be. I don't know. Jurgen. Jurgen is actually an Estonian name. <laughs> No, oh, maybe that is. Yeah. Maybe he's not. Oh, he's not a son. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay. Uh, that and Bridget Nielsen, of course, also uh, the uh, famous. Uh, she's really famous at this point after Rocky Four and uh, things of that nature. Mm. Uh, of course, on Lethal Weapon side, you got Arjun Red, you know, diplomatic immunity himself. Um, and then finally, number five, better sequel. Uh, which film is a better sequel? to the original film um it's kind of a confusing concept that jarvie had a hard time mm -hmm. to try, uh, try to rationalize it because if you say better sequel isn't that just a better film no it's which film serves the original better as a sequel mm -hmm. um so without further ado we'll get right into category number one i you know i forgot to do i've got to get ready to my uh, little score bad scoreboard so we can uh know who we're winning at the end so let me do that real quick i can wow. i can take the lead if you, if yeah, you go want, ahead you take want, the lead and I got it right I'll here. take the lead with better leads. Better leads. So we got Axel Foley versus Riggs <coughs> and Murtaugh. Now, all of them feel like they're most famous for these respective roles. And it does feel like, like if I had to snap judgment this category, I would say that I would go towards Riggs and Murtaugh because they feel more flawed and emotional characters. But Axel Foley, but Axel Foley is written as more of a comedic character and he relies on his jokes and gimmicks Riggs and Murtaugh feel more real that way but um this is gonna sound weird but I'm actually going to give this to Axel Foley because I think this is where their most famous role comes into play now when I think of Eddie Murphy I immediately think of Beverly Hills Cop that is the first role that comes to mind when I think about uh Mel Gibson the first role that comes to mind is Braveheart Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, but I do, I do like that mm, Riggs and Murta are more nuanced characters, but I'm going to base this on more of its iconic, icon, iconicity. Do we, do we decide iconicness? Iconic. <laughs> what the word, word is? <laughs> iconicness sounds good to me. Iconicness. 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 Um, We're saying some... iconis iconicity before we look iconicity. it up and it actually means Iconicence. something. Else. <laughs> iconicity. Iconicity. <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, where I'm actually going against um, my own feeling in, a, in, a, in that sense that I would give it to Riggs and Murtaugh, but I actually feels like Axel Foley is the way to go here because Eddie Murphy is so synonymous with the role. Very interesting. Okay, that's an interesting call. I'm thinking if you went back, didn't you give it to Riggs and Murtaugh or John McClane? I gave it to Riggs and Murtaugh last time. Yeah, that's kind of because in a similar sequence, it's almost like a, a, a having versus Axel Foley being almost more iconic than John McClane. I don't know why then. I don't know why. Yeah, this is. I, I think this might be an inner feeling that I can't explain at the moment. But okay, yeah, uh, maybe it's because uh, Bruce Willis as uh, John McClane has well the last movie kind of, and also his career has sort of. I don't want to say spiraled, yeah, it, but it has tanked, and it, that sort of leaves like a bitter taste in your mouth. But as in Eddie Murphy, it just feels like he's stepped away and is now making his comeback. I think he's uh, actually coming back for Beverly Hills Cop Four. I think yes. there was a rumor about that. That yeah. is, he is definitely he's making it. That's, that's next. I think once uh, Kobe Bryant is doing the Beverly Hills Cop Two after or four, or rather after he finishes coming to America, which is coming out soonish. Mm -hmm. I think now coming to America. Um, all right, Matty, I'll, I'll let you go next. Who do you, what do you think, Axel Foley or Riggs and Murtaugh? 
it's like this this is so tough um <laughs> again you do think if like you close your eyes and you tell someone think of eddie murphy axel foley is so iconic he you know he's he's charming he's clever and i feel like it's eddie murphy allowing himself to portray like his whole palette of characters mm -hmm. like pulling from many different influences and characters however you look at riggs and really we all relate to him like you want to be that guy he's a cool guy right he came up from a dark place and now he's like he's spontaneous he never learns from his mistakes and it's like oh there you hmm. go. Yeah, he's that, completely that crazy <laughs> yeah he's, he's a psycho but yeah and Murtaugh, you got yeah, he's straight, he's by the book, he's a family man. And we all have that friend that can convince us to do something stupid, like Riggs. He's everything you want in a partner because he, he goes with it. Whether it's reluctantly or not, like he will follow Riggs. Right. So in terms of better leads unless he uh Unless he jumps out a window with uh, Leader Guts, because that's actually famous. Like, why don't you follow me? Because he jumped out a <laughs> window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think i got to go with Riggs and Murtaugh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair point. Say. Yeah, it feels like, you know, did you, you, said, you said that he would be the better partner to have. If you think about, like, Axel Foley, he can bullshit his way out of any situation, but he might sure. do it in, like, it might cost you because what he does to Rosewood integrity just leaves him at the house and the people show up and they're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Axel is just fine. I'm just ah, fucking man. off now. <laughs> I feel like he could bullshit you into a situation. As yeah. well. That's very <laughs> true. Um, okay. So for me, I guess it's, I have similar, you both, uh, I'm basically echoing a lot of what you guys had said. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, this is Eddie Murphy at his peak. This is his swagger. I mean, he did do the family thing later on, did do the, the, the nutty, nutty professor and things like that. Um, but this was him and his like cockiest, his biggest swagger is off Saturday Night Live. Um, this was a great, great role. Such an iconic character for him. Uh, you can't, can't help but be drawn to him every time he's on screen. You wonder what he's going to say next. He's dangerous. He's cocky. Um, same time, though, that kind of sums up Riggs in a way, too, though. Mm -hmm. And then with Riggs, you do get the second character of having both emotional trauma, like actual real grounded emotional trauma from him mm -hmm. uh, to back it up. And you have the, the calmness of Murtaugh to, to bring him back to, to, to Earth in a way. You get the best of both worlds in a way. Um, it's almost unfortunate and unfair to do because you do have the two characters versus mm -hmm. the one. Um, but I... I think I do lean still toward Lethal Weapon 2, whether it's fair or not. Although it's very much by a slight, slight edge because Axel Foley is phenomenal. I can't wait to see him come back in Better Little Cop 4. I want to see if Eddie Murphy of old can, can regain that swagger, that swagger, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Lethal Weapon 2 for that. So, um, okay, moving on to better sidekicks. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. I think you could tell the way. I think we got Jeremy and I got both like almost decided already. I feel it away. Uh, but I'll, I'll lead on this one. Sure. Liam Getz is phenomenal. He's hilarious. <laughs> he's entertaining. He's Joe Pesci on crack uh, pretty much the whole time. He's a high speed talker, uh, he's smart as hell. He's so close to being annoying as well, but he isn't. But not quite no. there. He's annoying as to well, uh, to, 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 to Riggs yeah. to Riggs and Murta. That, but that's part of what makes it so funny. You want him on the screen. You want him on the screen more. You root for the guy, even though he's a, he's a scumbag. Uh, but uh, he's got these best great. Fuck you at the drive through. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you at the drive. <laughs> that's what I do. And he goes on and on. Tell all these stories. Uh, it gets so involved. Hey, okay, 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 okay. So many iconic things, and he's not even, it's almost funny to call him a sidekick because he's not really involved in the action too much, but he does get there because they have to drag him along to these places. Um, and he's he, he brings down sidekick. the building though, doesn't he? Yeah, that, that, yes, he helps with that. Yeah, at that point, uh -huh. so he's an unlikely sidekick. I'll say he's an unlikely sidekick because he shouldn't be there, and yet at the end of the film, I almost wonder, like, do they really? Do they really? Was he written to be as part of the franchise mm -hmm. at that point? Or just like, like we gotta we just gotta bring him back. I don't <laughs> care how. That's how that's how much it was. Um, but on the other side, you do have Billy Rosewood and John Taggart. This is probably my favorite Judge Reinhold 
uh, role. He's and he's in a lot of things. He's never not really famous for mm-hmm. uh, most of them. Um, there's something about his character in this that makes me. Uh, it's a subtle humor about him. He like why gentle. does he? He's, it's a gentle thing. But why does he like? He listens to Axel. And let's actually do pretty much anything he wants, even though he kind of gives these like, oh, wait, you shouldn't, uh, Axel, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> and then you got John Taggart, who's the more gruff, uh, uh, you know, crotchety old man, kind of not quite old, but then um, they make a great duo together, kind of like Lisa Murta in a way. Um, and they're more solidly based in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise, uh, as far as that goes. They're, they're legitimately part of it from the get go, from one, two, three. And so you need them, although. I think, uh, I think John Taggart's actually not in the third one for various reasons. Um, but that's not the journal that we're just talking about, too, right now. Um, I love, I do think Billy Roosevelt and John Taggart actually some of my very favorite parts of Billy Hope's Top 2. But Leo gets to put the smile on my face every time. I think I got to lean Leo Getz barely by a mm-hmm. hair. By it's hair. tough. I know how you feel. All right, go ahead. What do you have to say about Jeff? Uh, I'm, I, this is so tough for me. It feels like, um, hmm, I, I like, ex- again, going with my gut, I want to say Leo gets, but like Rosewood and Taggart, they're a little definitely more toned down and laid back characters. Um, if you put them against Leo gets, but Axel Foley lights them up. Like they're sort of plain and kind of, you could even say like boring characters without Axel Foley. But when he shows up, they both just light up and they sort of start living their full life. And they're, the chemistry is absolutely key here with, with these three. Like, if, if it weren't for Eddie Murphy as Axel Foley, this, I don't think this trio would have worked as well. And this is where I'm really leaning towards Beverly Hills Cop. But I don't think I can go against Joe Pesci here. Like, <laughs> he... Because he... Him, his character, he would work in another comedy as well without like Riggs and Murta. He's he's his own character, his fleshed out character. But Rosewood and Taggart, they're definitely reliant more on Axel Foley. I could easily see a Leo get spin off movie. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. That'd be, so I think for that reason, I gotta go with Lethal Weapon 2. Okay. All right. I'll take it. Maddie, what about you? Uh, this is a, this is an easy one for me and Javi just said it best. It's, I would happily watch a get spinoff movie, like <laughs> happily. He, like he's the ultimate psychic. He, he, he is the third leg of the movie, Paul. Mm-hmm. He is the third leg. The third appendage. <laughs> nice one. The third appendage he, as you were. <laughs> appendage, yeah. He's hilarious. That embassy scene is pretty damn uncomfortable. But he makes it hilarious, Perfect. and I don't. I don't think without him, like I would. I'd be like, oh, okay. I'm not sure, like, where they're going with this, but okay. And he just does not stop talking, mm-hmm. like <laughs> ever. Pes- <laughs> Pesci is. I love Joe Pesci. Pesci's brilliant as it gets, and I feel like Rosewood. He ha- he loves guns and he loves Stallone. Okay, that makes him cool mm-hmm. to me. But I feel like, like Javi said. I don't think if you put those two on their own without Axel Foley, I don't think it would be as entertaining. Like they need Axel more than Axel needs them. Right. So you could sense. say that they like Rosewood and Taggart, they are sidekicks and Leo Getz is just, he, he's one of the heroes pretty much. Almost, almost. Almost. Oh, I think he, he's the sidekick undersung Because the is supposed hero. to be reliant on the main character. So I kind of argued against myself there, but, I agree with what you said. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So then, uh, all right. Then that's done with that category. Then let's move on to action sequence. Uh, mm. Since you brought it up, Maddie, why don't you start us with that one? Considering you uh, made that your public defender uh, our, our question. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So you have in Lethal Weapon 2, you have the ship shoot out where you see Riggs empty a whole clip into a guy who. I'm pretty sure is already dead right from the off. So you're like, okay. And then proceeds to get his ass kicked, but he still wins. But I got to go Beverly Hills Cop too, just for one moment in particular where 
he fires the damn rocket launcher yeah. without even looking, and it hits the truck. And proceeding to one of my favorite lines in the movie of "fuck Rambo." <laughs> Fuck Rambo. Yeah. That is a good one. That is a good one, man. Yeah, I love that whole play. John Ta- that's where John Taggart comes into play at the end of Beverly Hills Cop 2. That's one of my favorite moments. He got the whole thing. He's got the uh, the armory in the back, basically. And he's like ready to go. That whole sequence there. It's not even a it's not even a, like a, a well crafted like shot or like mm-hmm. nothing about it. It's just good old fashioned eighties. 80s fun uh, as only Tony Scott could do in a way. 80s and 80s actions like the Tony Scott can direct uh, make it exciting and fun. Um, I do like the lethal weapon sequences we talked about last week as well. But like the taking down of the house uh, was a good set piece there. Yeah. I also love the helicopter with the the, the shooting down of the of the uh, Riggs's trailer. Yeah, I love that. Scene. There's a lot of good stuff. So I lean toward Lethal Weapon 2, and mainly because nothing in either movie really tops my, my one of favorite is the opening sequence in Lethal Weapon 2. The, cha- the car chase uh, with the comedy between Riggs and Murtaugh is just the chemistry between them is so great. Uh, of course, Mel, the driving the uh, the old beat up station wagon, or the, I'm sorry, the new mm-hmm. the new station wagon, but it, it's it's the old man car basically. Yeah. <laughs> What's speak. he driving? <laughs> Murtaugh's. Wife, <laughs> wife, wife. Oh, I didn't know that. I gotta take that, that back. <laughs> that back. Uh, and Mel Gibson's out there chasing it on foot. Uh, mm. It's such a fun. They always catch up on foot in movies. It's amazing how that do. works. So somehow, somehow they make it work. Um, but that's my favorite sequence from the either movies. I'm gonna lean towards *Lethal Weapon* too. Yeah, um, I gotta agree with you guys. And I haven't. I didn't even pick out like certain action sequences. But like the overall feel of the action, and when I think about Beverly Hills Cop Two, it's and when I was watching the action sequences, they kind of felt like fillers to me in a way that I was expecting, I was waiting for them to get to their uh, like another Axel Foley shenanigan or something. Mm. Their interactions, mm. the action was very basic, sort of, and I was kind of surprised because it's Tony Scott, and I love Tony Scott's one of my favorite directors of all time. Right. Like he truly yeah. is, but for some reason. In Beverly Hills Cop 2, maybe it's the times as well, and I'm more used to, you know, more riveting action sequences. But Lethal Weapon 2, I was really engaged, and I felt like they were always in danger, as in Beverly Hills Cop 2. I, I, I pretty much knew that they were going to get out of it. I, of course, I know that Griggs and Murtaugh would survive as well, but I felt for them, and I was afraid for them. I and that. I think that's Donner's directing. And it sort of, for some reason, I, I started thinking of uh, the first Superman movie, and now... Superman was vulnerable there as well. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going with Lethal Weapon here as well. Can't really, I think Tony Scott wasn't quite Tony Scott yet. That's kind of nope, how I feel about this sure. movie. for sure, yeah. Like, you're still finding the way. Top Gun is a movie like where you talk about in the Action Army a lot and everything else. And I always think that Top Gun was a little overrated overall. I do think there's great moments in there, but it's just kind of not what? completely... I do. I think it's a little overrated. I think it's it's a good film, but it's not a no. It's not a good film. It's a good. It's a good collection of moments. Sorry, say again. What movie is a bit Top, overrated? Top Gun. Oh no! It's you, overrated. You, no. Without Get in. getting into it, you are so wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm Wait. pissing off a lot of people, but it's that is yeah. It's it's a good collection of moments, but there's a lot there's a lot wrong with it. There's some good action sequences. So good. The, the flight sequences are great. Um, but it's like a, it's basically more of a, uh, it's more of a Air Force, uh, go join the Air Force Ra kind of public video. Wait, where's Kearns? I got to find Kearns. Here. <laughs> I got to find Matty Kearns. I, I got to go I've been Kearns. punched in the jaw a fair few times, but that hurt. Hearing POD <laughs> say that, actually hurts. I have been beating the shit out of quite a few times in my life. That hurt. Oh, Hearing wow. POD say the Top Gun is overrated, that that wounded me. I don't think he's quite there yet. He's not quite Tony Scott yet. It's good. It's good, but it, it, he gets much better later on in his career. It's almost as bad as me saying Henry Cavill or, over PSH. Almost. Yeah, almost. That was your worst ever take that I've ever heard you say. <laughs> ever. Ever heard you say. That, that was an ice cold take. Yeah, you're done on that one. We can't do that. So <laughs> well, I'm going to move along before I get killed on my This take. turn. <laughs> turn quickly. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, but, but the fact remains that Tony Scott definitely got more Tony Scott like in the nineties mm. and, la- and later on fast that he kind of honed his craft a little bit more at that point. Uh, he's a little raw here, not quite at the, at the level that he gets to. 
Um, like Men on Fire, for example, is my Tony Scott movie. That's the one that really. Yeah, same here. So um, absolutely, he's nowhere near that yet um, mm-hmm. at that point. So. All right, let's uh, move on. I believe everybody had their piece, so let's move on to better villains. That's mm. always a good thing. Without a, you can't have a good hero or a good action movie without a good villain. Um, I can yeah. take this one if you want to. No, yeah, go ahead, start. That's fine. Yeah, it's this. So um, I'm already kind of changing this category and not saying the villain, but I feel like this category is all about the first lieutenant. Because if we look at, it's both like elderly white guys just you know moving the pieces kind of like maxwell dent he, he he's he's okay argent rad is he feels dangerous but it's really about their henchman and henchwoman right because if we see bridget nielsen show up you're like immediate you know it's like the Die Hard too is when uh, sadler showed up he's like <laughs> okay he looks intimidating and she looks intimidating and you can tell that she's dangerous she's super attractive we haven't really gotten many female villains as well at that point so that was very refreshing and uh, lethal weapon 2 um oh i forgot about oh it's Derek o'connor yeah who plays uh Peter plays the south african yeah, yeah. Um, assassin pretty much yeah his his right hand man his right hand actually yeah. yeah and he is really terrifying like he's glassy look and like the um, when he shoots the guy on the uh, on the tarp <laughs> yeah yeah that's a, a good scene but i i th- think I got to go with Bridget Nielsen here because she's refreshing. She's intimidating. She's the whole package that you want in a, like a hinge one. All right, Maddie, what do you got to say? If we, if we're talking first lieutenants, then absolutely Bridget Nielsen. She, there's something about that woman, especially like, it looks like she can look through into your very soul Mm. and expose the weakest part of you. If we're talking villains overall, I gotta go with Arjun Rudd because he's just such a prick. It's like he knows he can't be touched. And we've all had that teacher, boss, like especially politician that you just want to make shit their own teeth. But dude, Bridget Nielsen, there's just something about her in this mm-hmm. that just oh uh, not yeah. creeps me out, but makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. She's unsettling. Yeah. When she assass or attempts to assassinate the uh, the captain there mm-hmm. and shoots him on the side of the road on the thing, that's just it's just cold blooded and so ooh, it's harsh. Um, so I'm sorry about it. I interrupt you. You're going with you're doing going with Beverly Hills Cop. You want that one? Grab the Bridget Eastland. Yeah, I'll go Beverly Hills Cop. Okay. Uh, I will also. I think I got to go that way too. I will say Arjun Rudd is leaps and bounds better than Maxwell Dent. I mm-hmm. that's kind of just a, a focus point. Uh, but Bridget Wilson is also much better. I think she's much better than the assassin from with what mm-hmm. Peter once said. And he's good, but it's just not the same. Um, so it basically comes down to Arjun Rudd versus Bridget Nielsen. Arjun Rudd is someone who's got a very punchable face. Uh, as, because he says all the time, because it's always a diplomatic immunity. Uh, oh, I love it. And I, I said it last week. I'll say it again. Uh, I'll say it again. I said it last week. That's one of my favorite lines with Danny Glover. You know, it's, it's the cheesiest line in the world, you know. Diplomatic immunity. It's been revoked. It's been revoked. <laughs> so cheesy. But so awesome. <laughs> so good. Every action movie needs that one line. Yeah. Right? right? Exactly. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm more intrigued by seeing Bridget Nielsen, what she's going to do. She makes me want to watch more and see what the heck is this girl going to do and how she's going to kick somebody's ass. And how, uh, She's awesome. So I got to go Beverly Hills Cop 2 as well. So we're down to one category. Now we're kind of breezing through these in a way. I kind of like it. That's not that bad. Uh, better sequel. Which film serves as a better sequel to their first original film? Lethal Weapon 2 to Lethal Weapon and Beverly Hills Cop 2 to the original Beverly Hills Cop. What do you think? Oh, you went and Jarvie already took that. I'll take this first one then, since I uh, last time. Uh, since I was the one who explained the concept. Uh, I loved the fact that Lethal Weapon 2 really developed the characters. I said this last week when I said to beat mm-hmm. Die Hard 2, because Die Hard 2 is more of a clone of Die Hard 1, for example. Uh, Lethal Weapon 2 actually takes these characters on a journey. It not only helps their relationship, not only, um, not only you know, their individual characters, you get Murtaugh's family life, you tie back in the character of, of Mel, Mel Gibson, uh, Riggs losing his wife and then losing his girlfriend, to the characters who you find out later on are the ones who killed his wife in the first place. There's a lot of um, 
a lot of depth in the Lethal Weapon franchise continuity because of the it feels like it feels like the journey continues. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still with these same characters. They're just a little bit different from having gone through what they went through. Not different just because. Like and a total random. This is totally. I just might be totally weird. I just watched Major League and then watched Major League Two, and like the characters, like sometimes Major League Two are different, but just because they need to be, because that's what the script says, and like and that's they just need to be different for various reasons to to make sure the story fits. In Lethal Weapon Two, it feels like a journey was made. It feels like these are the same characters I met, and it's just a, it's just a, a certain amount of time later after having the experiences that they had. Turn that around. You got Beverly Hills Cop too. Beverly Hills Cop 2 is like the bad boys 2 to bad boys. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not, uh, Beverly Hills Cop is more of a serious, grittier role. Beverly Hills Cop 2 is far more cartoonish. Uh, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, that's what I love about it. It's my, I, it's my favorite of the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. Yep. It's Eddie Murphy at his peak swagger, his cartoonish nature. It's over the top. It's, it's loud. It's proud. It's in charge. Um, but in that way, it makes it kind of a different movie and a little less of a sequel in a way. I got to lean toward Lethal Weapon 2, and it makes it a better cohesive story. Beverly Hills Cop and Beverly Hills Cop 2 seem like in the same universe, but maybe a little disjointed comparatively. Uh, I don't know. Gunner, Maddie, you want to go? Or Jari? Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I think Lethal Weapon 2 <laughs> feels like the next chapter of the story. I feel we definitely it, it there's a sense of familiarity to it especially yeah. with the characters beverly hills cop 2 it's kind of like it's episodic it's like okay you've put the same characters in just a different a completely different environment it doesn't feel like a continuation of the story to me which a a, a good sequel is obviously you look at the best franchises how they're all laid out is they all tell one long story that leads to a certain endpoint, and it all meshes well together and you grow to love those characters i found myself more relating to Riggs as the as it goes along obviously i'll talk a little bit about four in a bit because four is my favorite out of the whole franchise but i gotta go with oh, this is a tough one <laughs> i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go lethal weapon two because my main reason as i said it leads to four which was the Hollywood debut of one of my heroes, Jet Li. Mm -hmm. And Jet Li was amazing in that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my main selfish reason. But yeah, it, I just feel it's a better sequel because it continues the story so much better. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, Jarvis, down to you. Yeah, um, I think I got to go with Lethal Weapon 2 as well. This is the category where I was um, most undecided on because you're true, like Beverly Hills Cup 2, it, you you can like if you haven't even seen the first movie but you you start with the second one you feel there you feel taggart rosewood and um bogomil's connection immediately and when he when, when axel gets the call he's just completely drops everything he just goes straight over there i like the loyalty and you feel like there's history there yeah absolutely absolutely but but lethal weapon 2 has that like like i said riggs's wife and how it all ties into the story and at first you, you've got like as i said last week um it actually feels like an episode like a weekly episode of a crime show like in a movie in movie format in a good way because right. i enjoyed it. it felt like they're they're another adventure but when they bring in the actual killers of his wife that's when the movie sort of amps up yeah and it, and it turns into more dramatic um more yeah. dramatic movie and it's one, one of my favorite scenes is the kitchen scene when uh, Riggs and Murtaugh's wife's uh, wife is talking. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, what's funny. So, ben and Drew taught us well about that. How Sometimes it's those like little moments in between the action sequences that mm -hmm. are actually make the movie better or worse. Like it actually makes it stand out. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Terry. No, no, no. That, that's that's okay. pretty much you, you guys said everything else that I w wanted to say, but I, I got to go with Lethal Weapon 2 okay. for, for the for the depth and how they bring in his uh, wife's storyline. Well, all right, then. And that's uh, that's how we are going to end this. We actually have uh, finished up here uh, and it's not it's not actually not too close. 
Uh, Maddie, I'm sorry, you were the idiot. Uh, I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> as far as did you call our guest? Did you just call our guest an idiot? I did. Hey, I, it's fine. It, it, I I knew I was gonna lose, but I was like, maybe, just maybe. Is this one of those times where I pick something and it goes the other way? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go the other way. But I I knew, I I, I knew, I knew what the result was gonna be, and I, I'm happy to take the bullet to be the idiot. <laughs> Come on, class action as a guest and be an idiot. <laughs> Come on, you <laughs> ridden by PLD. Uh, take your medicine like a man. Uh, <laughs> Lethal Weapon 2 wins 10 to 5. Uh, it's another great that ends up. It's, a, it's another it's, it, it makes sense to me. I'm happy to see it out of the three Lethal Weapon 2, Die Hard 2, and Beverly Hills Cop 2. I think I do like Lethal Weapon 2 overall as the better, best movie of the three. What mm -hmm. would you, just just curiously, snap judgment aside there, Maddie, what would you have picked between Die Hard 2 and Lethal Weapon 2? God damn. Uh, Die Hard 2. You would Die Hard oh, 2. Huh? Wow. Yeah, I would have gone Die Hard 2. Just because solely, just the line of Yip Kaye, motherfucker. It is an <laughs> iconic line. It's man. so iconic, man. It's like, so iconic. <sighs> 110%, yeah. man. Absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, let's uh, we'll end this up. Thank you guys so much uh, in the chat. Let us know what you feel. Let us know who, who is the idiot. Maybe it's me or the idiot. I, I, I'll take that. I'll take that burden. Um, but like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, I know next week, I believe, we're going to be doing, if we didn't change our minds, I'll, I'll just announce it, and Jarvie can tell me yes or no. I'm going to be doing Godzilla versus uh, the 2014 Godzilla mm -hmm. versus uh, Kong Skull Island. Uh, that should be a fun battle there. Yeah, um, monster movies. Monster movie time, just in time for Halloween. Uh, that should be a fun battle. Um, and we've got some other ones coming up. we got some other great episodes in, in uh, motion that we'll let you know as soon as we close the details, so to speak, on that. Otherwise, uh, Maddie, where can the folks find you? So you can find me on Twitter at Matty Gunner, uh, Instagram Matty underscore Gunner. Uh, you can also find me Wednesdays and Sundays on the Outcast and Underdogs MMA show where we break down uh, the week's cards, uh, boxing, MMA, kickboxing, all kind of combat sports. Uh, and you can also find me kicking ass in the general debate So hmm, over on true. this very channel, which a lot of people seem to be calling out my name with my name in their mouth. So... All Whoa. I have to say to that is maybe don't come off of a loss and then we can talk. Wow. Wow. Put some respect on his name. Don't be, just be careful what you wish for. Manny Gunner can come out firing. I'll we'll have to say, man. We'll have to say. That's uh, another pun. <laughs> come out firing. <laughs> Jarvis, he's counting the puns. I should have a pun <laughs> counter. All right, Jarvis, where can the folks find you? Uh, you can find me here on Class Action uh, with Paul Denuzio. You can find me on Instagram at Richard Eric with a K Jarvi, and on Facebook as well. For Estonian viewers, you can find me on a movie show called The Film Guru. It's actually Filmi Guru uh, on Instagram, and these episodes are on the web. Um, that's pretty much it. Yep. All right. Uh, me at Paul underscore Denise, you on Twitter. You can find me on Class Action. You can find me on Action Industries, uh, producing for Ben and Drew. You can find me on Call to Action, the movie trivia showdown podcast, where I do Chilled Action as the weekly interview show. Uh, I also have PLD Projects, which I just on last night, all night tier ranking horror franchises. We do those every once in a while. Uh, and finally, also now you can find me on the SCN show, producing for uh, Jen Stridger and Brad Gilmer's coming up next. Uh, Great show. It's a fun, fun show, so please check that out as well. Um, yeah, and that's uh, about it. Um, so like the kids say at home, guess what? You know what? The time has come. I'm going to make Charlie laugh. Justice is served. <laughs> no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Court is adjourned. Take care, everybody. Bye now.